Welcome to our second talk of the evening. Oh, sorry. I just squished somebody in the door. Okay, I would like to introduce to you Gary Greenberg. Gary Greenberg earned his PhD in biomedical research from the University of London. He was an assistant professor at the University of Southern California during the 1980s. In 1990, he co-founded Edge Scientific Instrument Corporation, where he developed high-definition, three-dimensional light microscopes, for which he was issued 18 U.S. patents. Dr. Greenberg is currently a research affiliate at the, Uni at the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy here on Maui, where he uses 21st century 3D microscopes to investigate moon, moon sand collected during NASA's Apollo missions 40 years ago. Please welcome Gary Greenberger, who will talk about the universe in a grain of sand. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, am I going to do I really? I don't really need that. I'm not, I'm okay. Not gonna talk. Everybody can anyway. hear me, right? Okay. Eh? Um, oh, but you can't hear me. Okay, so we do need that. Okay. Okay, it doesn't like this. staying on. It, it. Uh, the microphone, too. We'll go like this. Uh, okay. I look like I'm uh, doing a TED talk or something, huh? <laughs> okay, so everybody can hear me. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about the universe and a grain of sand. The first thing I want to show you is um, uh, uh, my, my business partner, Stacy Keach, and I have been wanting to do things about, uh, make little sort of documentaries about science and art for a long time. And we are uh, promoting this, uh, this, I'm going to show you a little short which is a promotional film to raise some money about doing a, a, little, uh, a little documentary called The Universe in the Grain of Sand. So I want to start by showing you this little document, this little promo for the documentary, and then I'm going to talk a little more about moon sand and micrometeorites and stuff like that. So I wonder if we can turn the, the lights down. How, are we okay with that, you think? Um, Stars were huge walls of hydrogen gas 
but condensed under the influence of gravity, creating gigantic thermonuclear reactions, resulting in the creation of helium. These stars ended their lives in spectacular explosions known as supernova. The extreme temperatures and pressures within these supernova forged the creation of elements heavier than helium. These first grains of cosmic sand were formed during these amazing explosions. Sand is ubiquitous throughout the universe. Outer space is filled with tiny grains of sand and dust. These tiny bits of gas, dust, and sand become micrometeorites, asteroids, moons, and planets, and eventually human beings. Sand and dust are continually being formed from the explosion of stars. We can see these cosmic rock, sand, and dust particles on a dark night when they collide with the Earth's atmosphere and burn brightly. We call them shooting stars. All of the basic elements that make up our bodies, such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus, they are all created during the explosion of stars. When we walk along the beach, we are strolling on millions of years of geological and biological history. Some grains of sand are beautiful bits of eroded rock and minerals. consists of a myriad of multicolored minerals. Microscopic multicolored glass fragments were created by fire mountain volcanoes. 3.6 billion years ago. The spectrum of time in the microscope has taken us on a journey through the universe to the grain of sand. To see a world in a grain of sand and the heaven in a wildflower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. So that was a, we finally got that to play at the sequence. Um, there were sort of technical difficulties there. So I've been looking at sand for a long time, and sand is pretty small. It's about a tenth of a millimeter, 
what a half a millimeter uh, fine sand is. And that's, that's the first sand I ever looked at was from Maui. And that's Maui sand. That's the first stuff I looked at. And I was amazed to see what sand actually was. Is it time to? No. I know. Um, grab this again. Sorry, step on. Let me put this on again. So uh, sand, is, sand is pretty incredible looking. I didn't realize it until I started looking at this stuff about 10 years ago um, when I got didn't have much to do. And uh, I started looking at sand, and it was totally amazing. I got really um, pretty much involved, and I had people send me sand from all over the world. This is sand from, uh, from McKenna. Uh, big Beach, and if you look at it kind of really close, that's what it would look like. And as you start to look at it closer, you can see there's shell fragments and bits of coral in the middle there. You see there's some really interesting stuff. When you look at it in a microscope, you can see that there's all kinds of amazing stuff in the sand. There's a little bit from the volcano here. That's a sea urchin spine, a little, a little worm there. So there's totally amazing stuff in sand. And... Uh, I got pretty enthralled by it. This is all from Maui, all the sand. This is from sliding sands up in Haleakala. Um, there's some beautiful glass. Uh, a lot of the sand in Haleakala looks a lot like moon sand, in fact. A lot of glass in there. Um, so when stars explode, they make these heavier elements in sand. These are micrometeorites. The space is filled with micrometeorites. A lot of them are hollow, like this one here and this one here. And these are really tiny grains of sand. When they come in to the Earth through the atmosphere, they burn really brightly, and they look like you know shooting stars. They're really bright and amazing looking. Uh, that's close up to one of these little tiny micrometeorites. That's the inside of this one here. Um, that's a hollow one. That's a meteorite. Yeah. How do some of them make it through the atmosphere so you can see it? The, the ones that are a little bit bigger uh, uh -huh. don't burn up. And when, when they land in the South Pole, they're easy to get because anything that land, any sort of sand that's in the South Pole came from, out, came from up there. So the, 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 we get them from the Army, and they drill these, these wells for drinking water. And, the, and all these little micrometeorites go to the bottom of the well, and you can actually just get them out of the bottom of the drinking well. They're all over the place there. Because there's a lot of micro micrometeorites are bombarding the Earth, really a lot. So there's tons of this stuff every day, a lot, a lot of it. Um, that's a little closer to a meteorite. Of course, a meteorite's a little bigger than a micrometeorite. They can be quite large. Uh, there's some moon sand. I think we all, that was the first picture of moon sand I took. It looked a little bit like the moon. Uh, and I, I, I designed these microscopes that look, this is a, a grain of moon sand, and regular microscopes you have to look at all different levels to see what's there, but my microscope puts it all together and into 3D. If you come to the lab, I'll show you this stuff in 3D. So that, so you see, you, we got two, two views of it, and if you put that through a viewer, a 3D viewer, you'd see that in 3D. So is that really what it looks like? Well, I like to show people that nothing is really what it looks like. You're always looking at something from a particular point of view. This is a grain of sand. These are all the same grains of sand. This is from a light microscope. This is from uh, an electron microscope. The light microscope, you can see through it. You can see color and polarization of light. With an electron microscope, you see all the surface details. This is a, an X-ray microscope, and you can see through what's inside. So this same grain of sand looks very different depending on how you look at it, what kind of microscope you look at it with. And the world is really that way. What you see in the world depends on how you're looking at it. Uh, there's lots of glass spherules. And, uh, these are some beautiful... Um, like there, there were fire found volcanoes in the moon um, uh, 3.6 billion years ago, and they made a lot of glass. And this glass is still made from the impacts on the moon. So there's lots of colored glass, and they get bombarded and, and, con and continually made into smaller and smaller shards, smaller and smaller pieces of glass. And it's a big problem for astronauts who went there. These little shards of glass really cause a lot of problems for them. But that's a little grain of sand from the moon formed about 4 billion years ago, and it hasn't eroded at all. It still looks pretty much the same as it was when it was formed. Um, that would never happen on the Earth. And here, the Earth, the, the, the oceans and the water and the, and the uh, wind and rain and so forth uh, erode sand away, but not so on the, m on the moon. So I'm, I want to invite you all to come down the hallway this way. Come take a look. At some of the, we've got, you know, we've got sand under this microscope in 3D you can take a look at, and some other cool stuff to take a look at. So hopefully you will do that, and uh, that's about it. Let me turn the light on. Thank you. Thank you very much.
<laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties there. That was a close call. <laughs>